Look at that. It's Drac. I'm back and I'm here to say hello. And I want to talk to you about the playgrounds we had as kids, as Gen X kids and what they were. And they, they were not like you have today. They weren't these safe padded or even sand or even little tiny pea gravel rocks under all our stuff. Our stuff was anchored in with concrete which was exposed, usually sticking out a couple inches. So you not only like you stub toes or you fell on it, but people whacked their heads on it. Everything was made out of metal. There was no plastics or anything. Everything was just metal. You know, we had climbing walls that weren't attached to anything else. They're just a wall of tires stacked 12 high that just went straight up. You would climb and they would say, they would tell the little kids like the, kindergartners in grade ones not to climb on it you know if you're not big enough and they would still try it and they'd get three or four up and they would fall and the teacher would come and get them and have to tell them you can't go on there anymore but sure as shit the very next recess you would see that same kid trying to climb up that tower of tires again and us the one tower tire we had i, I mentioned this before off it when you got to the top just had a metal pole we just stuck out like a fireman's pole that they just kind of horseshoed off and you would slide down now most of us thought it was a great idea to hop on that thing and slide down head first well it wasn't in the sand it was like i said that thing was pulled in cemented in with concrete so you had this round concrete base about a foot across the pole sticking out of the middle that was exposed in the ground and we'd slide down head first and none of us thought of anything about maybe breaking with our legs or hands or anything. So we'd slide down full speed and crack right into that thing. Somebody would cry. Somebody would get knocked out. I'm pretty sure we had concussions, but we were too young to realize what a concussion was. And there'd always be somebody bleeding. Every day there was somebody bleeding on the playgrounds. Whether it was from a pinched finger from the swings you got whacked in the face with the teeter-totter and almost bit your freaking tongue off. But let me get to the swings. We had these swings. Uh, they, were, they were tall, right? And they were just metal, metal A-frame with no middle crossbar. Just up, pull across, and with chains hanging down. And our chain, our chain links on our swing, our school, were, they're about, you know, 10 inches or 12 inches. Probably 12 total counting the loop on each side that connected to the other one. So it was a big straight link, you know, like a straight piece of bar with like two links almost welded on the end, but it was bent in shape. And they were linked together. And that was our chain for swinging or rope or whatever they're using now. I haven't been to a swing set in a long time. And that went down and locked into just a straight, flat, boarded plank. That was, that was it. And you would get that sucker going. And the way those chains, because the way those chains were, of course, every kid wants to swing as high as they possibly can. And we did. Man, did we get high? We would get even with the bar and we would try and go higher than the top crossbar. And we and we would. But you would get up that high. And because that chain, the way that was designed, you would go up, all that chain would all of a sudden come in together. So when you came back down, you would literally free fall about halfway until all of a sudden you extended all that chain out again and it would jerk you. And a lot of kids would fall off or they'd immediately stop because they'd panic and they'd freak out. And it was, it was quite the ride. And if you were real brave, you would get up there and while you were swinging, you would flip around upside down, hook your legs around the chain up there and hold on to the wooden seat and swing upside down and we would get told we're not supposed to do that but nobody would ever come and stop us but we had teachers on the playground we'd have one teacher and all they were really concerned was was making sure the bigger kids weren't hurting the little kids that was that was what they were for they weren't worried about us hurting ourselves or the stupid crap that we came up with because that was the swings and our teeter-totters were no better we got brand new ones now our swings were dangerous but our teeter-totters were no better. We'd gotten new ones at our school when I was about 10. Now, these things were meant to be buried into the ground about six feet is what they were meant, but they didn't bury them. They just placed them on the top. So you had these really long teeter-totters that were six feet higher than they were supposed to be. 
So you couldn't even get on it when one kid was on one end. You couldn't even get on it if it was level. You would have to have it tipped all the way one way, and the one kid would sit on it, and they were, again, they were just a metal pipe with a wooden seat bolted on the end with a metal crossbar to hold on to. And you would have to have one kid sitting on that seat on the bottom holding it while the other one shimmied all the way up to the top to get onto the seat and hopes that when you were almost there, that buddy all of a sudden didn't decide to be an asshole and just hop off and let you fall to the ground, which happened quite often. And it always happened when it was done. Somebody would always, the one party on the way down would just be like, I'm out of here, peace out. And they would just bail off that thing. And you'd see the other person come crashing down until, you know, and then the summer hit. And the next year we went back to school and they had actually dug up and buried these things in the way they were supposed to be in the ground. Because they, they had to fix that. Sorry, I keep getting distracted here. I got like three cats and a dog in this room. And as soon as I start recording, they all of a sudden all want attention or all want out the damn door. Right? Yep. There's one there chasing a fly, it looks like. But where I grew up, we got quite a bit of snow. And this is the big one. Because not only did we have a big dirt mound in the summertime in the back of our thing, and I don't know why, they just piled a giant mound of dirt for us to play on, and we did. In the winter, the town would come in with their loaders and, and their dozers and everything, and they would take all the snow off the field out in the playground and pile it into this giant snow mountain. To us kids, that thing was freaking huge. It was probably about 16 feet high, 18 feet high. And they'd do it with a couple peaks on it, and one would always be higher than the other. And, of course, we would play the classic game then, uh, King of the Hill. Who's going to be the king of the hill? Somebody would go up and you would be up there and the rest would come. And the idea would be to grab that person and throw them off the 16 foot high pointed jagged block of ice that's been freezing for the last few months. And of course, you know, we're told, oh, you're, you shouldn't do that. But we'd go up and we'd do it anyway. And they wouldn't stop us. They'd let us. And it never failed. Again, every year, one or two people broke an arm. Uh, that, was, that was very common. And it was never because the playground was unsafe. It was because they just, us kids were unsafe. I think that's one of the things that made Gen X the way we are. Not, not just the, the physical battle scars and the emotional scars of our parents going here to be seen and not heard and get the hell out of here, kid. Nobody wants to listen to you. This is adult time. You know, we, we had a lot of that. But it was the scars and the lessons we learned from having to figure out shit was dangerous on our own by breaking our arm or watching our best friend get carted off in an ambulance. I mean, it happened to me a few times. Shit, one time I was in a goofing around when I shouldn't have been trying to do stuff way older than I was on a BMX when I was 10 years old. Wasn't wearing any of the safety gear that day because I was I would like to be MX racing, but I, I wouldn't wear the safety gear except when they made you. Did a jump, had an accident, impaled myself on the handlebars, and wound up in the hospital for eight months. Eight months I was in the hospital. They didn't think I was gonna actually get out of the hospital. That's how bad that was. That that's that was part of the playground. Our BMX track. Like everything was right there. It was a tiny little town. I mean, it was a little town. I, I lived on a farm, acreage, and the town that I bust to, which was the big town that we went to school in, was about 300 people. And that's where our school was. It was elementary school, you know, typical small town. You all got one. Some of them had a high school too, but not ours. They moved ours to the town even further. But you had that. So you had the, the tire wall. The deadly swing, the teeter totter from hell. And we had this uh, wooden balance beam. Don't know why we ever had it or what it was, but it was just essentially made out of raw log on posts that started out wide and got narrower and narrower. And it would go high and it would go low and it would go, you know, and it went around. It was, and. I don't really remember people being on it much. You would once in a while. You'd see who could run around it the fastest. 
you know, but usually you were on that. The only danger of that was you'd be running around on it and some dick would come running up beside and knock your pegs out from under you and down you'd go. You know, usually, you know, if they were really mean, they would try and split your legs. So if you were a guy, you landed bow-legged over that thing and squashed your nuts. Otherwise, they would just try and knock your leg out while you were running and you'd fall sideways, hit that thing on your stomach or your ribs and wind yourself for the next 30 seconds, sitting there gasping, trying to breathe, thinking when this is over and I could stand up and everyone's no longer calling me a baby because I started crying, I'm going to go kick that guy's ass. So that, was, that was a playground solution to everything. Kicking ass. Kicked a lot of ass. You know why we kicked ass when we were kids? we didn't have bubble gum. Anyway, this is Drax saying bye-bye for now, and I'll talk to you later. Peace out.